Welcome back, everybody, to Social Workers and Scriptures Podcast. We are so glad to be with you today. Our topic today is blessed, but so stressed. We are so thankful for you guys. Feel free to check us out on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. We are out there. We are on Podbean, Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, Google Chrome. We are out there. Find us on Facebook and Instagram under Social Workers and Scriptures and also on YouTube. Give us a like if you don't mind and follow so that way you don't miss anything. Okay. Thanks a lot so much. We are so thankful for all those in our own country in the United States, but also in those that are joining us from other countries like Canada and Colombia, Greece and India. We're so glad that you're with us. Thank you so much. Feel free to tell your buddies. We're so glad. Welcome to our podcast. So again today, blessed, but so stressed. The purpose of our podcast today is to help people cope and have joy when living with real life stress. Okay. And then as always, we want to address our vulnerable areas and our mental health to help address maybe our vulnerable areas in our spiritual walk. Let's jump in. But before we start, actually, let's tell you a little bit about what we're not. This is not a substitute for individual psychotherapy to treat underlying conditions or chronic mental health issues. Each person needs assessment on a case-by-case basis for treatment purposes. Do not go off your meds without medical consultation. If you are having a psychiatric emergency, please go to your nearest ER or dial 911. If you are in a crisis, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. It's also 1-800-273-TALK. Lastly, we are not experts theologians, but we do believe the Bible is the ultimate authority. We are Christians, and we are also mental health therapists. We will be presenting from those aspects today. Let's jump in, like always. Is stress so bad? What does it even do to my body? How does stress affect the body? Because you guys have listened to us, you know I'm a a definitions person, so I will have a couple of research facts and the top 10 stressors. Stress is normal to a certain extent, like meeting deadlines. Some of us work well under pressure, although stress for long periods of time takes a toll on your body. According to what is known as the Yerkes-Dotson Law, performance increases with physiological or mental arousal or stress, but only up to a certain point. When the level of stress becomes too high, performance decreases. So obviously, all of us that work better under pressure, which, you know, especially doing finals and doing grad school, all of those things, obviously, we work well under pressure to a certain extent. But when that becomes too much or long term, obviously, it declines after that. Some of the effects of stress include headaches, muscle tension or pain, fatigue, changes in your sex drive, stomach upset, sleeping problems. This list was compiled through the Mayo Clinic. Stress also lowers your immune system, making it harder to fight off disease. Stress also produces this hormone called cortisol, and it triggers a fight-or-flight response. And over time, in, in your body for prolonged periods, it can lead to anxiety, depression, heart disease, obesity. According to the Center for Disease Control, black women have a life expectancy that's three years shorter than the average white woman. Great. So and does that mean I have, like, the... one and a half? <laughs> <laughs> Like have white, what happens there? <laughs> One point five. All right, wonderful. Yeah. Sorry. In Sorry. essence, stress can literally cause you to live less, and obviously, with more health and emotional complications. The top ten stressful life events, according to the widely validated Holmes and Rahi stress scale, these are the top ten stressful life events for adults that can contribute to illness: death of a spouse, divorce, marriage separation. Obviously, I always think imprisonment. Death of a close family member, injury or illness, marriage, job loss, marriage reconciliation, and retirement. You know, I just realized on that list, that just really points to how important marriage is and how much that impacts our life. I think like half of those were relation to marriage, right? Yes. But not the imprisonment. Imprisonment is not related to the marriage, right? (laughs) (laughs) Although they say that it is, right? They call it the old ball and chain. (laughs) Some of us prefer young ball and chain, but anyway. <laughs> so Kat, um, from your point of view, why is stress so bad? Why does it affect the body? Well, you know, I don't really think that stress is always bad, right? Like we mentioned that there's good stress, there's good stress, and there's bad stress, right? Um, I think stress is inevitable unless you're living in a bubble. And even then, living in, bubble, in a bubble is probably a little bit stressful, even in then. I think that, you know, in the Bible, it tells us in 1 Peter 4.12, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. So I think we can expect that stress is going to happen. Things are going to come up. And often I think blessings come with responsibilities. 
often we love to just have these blessings that, that we're blessed with, but then we find out that the Lord has something within those blessings for us, right? Something that points to his kingdom or some, some work that needs to be done. I think a great example of that is marriage, right? Marriage can be such a, a blessing, but it also comes with particular charges and, and uh, responsibilities. I think we're always to be working for the kingdom, but Jesus tells us that the world is going to be against us and that there is going to be challenges that come up. Again, there is good stress and there is bad stress and both have an impact upon us. In essence, I don't think stress is bad per se. Um, it's how we interpret it and how we respond to it. How, where we file that in, in the filing cabinet system of our brain here, right? Is it the anxiety pile? Is it in the, oh, great, I hope that never happens again pile or file? Is it in our joy file? Things like that. I think we've heard a lot of times, like you can have a particular event come up, but based on how you respond to it and what the benefit of it is how you interpret the pain. You give birth and it hurts, but you're willing to go through it because of the joy of a baby. You want to wear pretty little cute jewels in your ear or maybe a a nice little tattoo on your arm. You're going to have to have some pain for that. But if you were to experience that pain in a different manner, you might freak out a little bit. But because you have a benefit coming out of it, you interpret it differently. I think that sometimes stress brings us blessings and it motivates us. It's very odd, very rare for us to get purified and for things to take shape and change without some sort of pressure, right? Some sort of, of stress. But like in James, he tells us to count it all joy. Why? Because the trials that come eventually will produce steadfastness and all those things. Some stress reminds us of our need for God, helps us to cry out for him. And then some stresses just want to cause us to explode. I think if you continually respond in a vulnerable, raw way to, stre- raw way to stress, you will have physical and mental effects. It's important to develop some sort of hardiness or some sort of positive response. And in order to deal with it, people who continue to feel the impact of stress without the benefit or some sort of hardiness, they, they tend to expend a lot of energy, which comes out as anxiety, and they often get depressed from expending all of those energy, all of that energy, excuse me, or they might start getting hopeless, and we don't want that for you. Also, just lastly, before we move on, you know, codependents deal with stress in a, a little bit different of a way. They tend to internalize it, and then they tend to have somatic symptoms and kind of start getting depressed sometimes. So those, those are things that are reasons of why it's so important to learn how to handle stress and to know that how stress can affect the body. So if we're thinking, all right, I'm I'm stressed, Susan, I am stressed, and I don't even know where to begin. I can't manage, I don't know where to start, what do I do? I like to say that when you're so stressed, you don't know how, where to begin, they, uh, we always use the metaphor of a garage, like start somewhere small, Basically, if you're stressed, you don't know where to begin, um, make a list of priorities. I think that's really helpful in terms of like, okay, what needs to get done first? Obviously, roof overhead, clothes on back, food on table. Obviously, all of those things are priorities. And then make your way down that list. Less of a priority. Obviously, frivolous things like needing to look perfect at your house, obviously, is way or being frivolous is like way down on the list. And do what you can. It's not the end of the world if the whole list doesn't get done, but the priorities get done, your bills get paid, you obviously have water to take a shower, all of these things, rent, obviously. Start with those things, yeah, not the shoes. Start with, the, <laughs> okay. start with priorities and then yeah. work your way down to uh, maybe wants or f- frivolous things. And so in that, like, build up like th- those small increments into something like as, as a bigger whole. It helps you especially people that are distance learning right now, helping your children like, okay, like start at 8 a.m. Okay, getting the kids logged on. That's one thing. Then later on, trying to redirect them. That's another thing. So small increments eventually will make your day. Hopefully you'll give yourself like praise because all of those increments made a whole day and you got through the day. And, you know, stress is like one foot in front of the other. And pretty much like if you do that on a daily basis, it kind of, you can kind of manage. Don't look at it like, what needs to be done tomorrow or a week from now. Just try to get through the day. It helps really to center yourself um, and set yourself up for success. Stress is like cleaning. It's a process. Laundry Great. first. And then <laughs> and then the rest goes later, like oh, the no. deep cleaning of your baseboards and, and you know, dusting your six-foot ceiling fan. Cleans their ba- <laughs> okay. That was very oddly We specific. are on two different <laughs> planets when it comes to cleaning here. <laughs> <laughs> so Kat, what would you say like for the for that person that's been like, where do I start? Well, I hear you, right? Um, okay, one rule, start somewhere. 
just start somewhere. Yes, if you can, if you have high executive functioning and you got a whole bunch of emotional control, yes, you should prioritize. Absolutely. For some of the rest of us, I think um, just start. If you try, just start. Okay. Know that things, the Lord will, is going to help you. Proverbs 3, 5, 6, it tells us, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding and all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make your, straight your paths. Just start. You know, we can sometimes, I don't know if you've ever been so stressed that you just don't even know where to start. And so you just don't. And then you're more stressed because you don't get, you don't start anything. That's pretty crazy, right? Like if you're at work and all these things, you just need to start somewhere. Okay. So what happens is our anxiety starts going up. We start getting paralyzed. Some of us have perfectionism in us and we're indecisive. And so to make the wrong choice is paralyzing for us. It's okay. Even if it's not the best choice on, on the, just at least it's a choice. At least you got something done. So just get started. One of, one of my professors used to say over analysis paralysis. Oh Don't goodness. overthink it. Hello, jump right? in. Just jump in. <laughs> because I think it takes so much time, huh? You're yeah. like, what should I do? Oh, shoot. It's already done. <laughs> like like I've said before, indecision is a decision. Mm. Say it one more time. <laughs> that felt like somebody Indecision slapped me on the face. Indecision is a decision. <laughs> <laughs> I need a fan up in here. <laughs> somebody. All right. Yes, definitely. Right. Just get started. Don't worry about if I make the wrong decision. Just jump in. Also, lower your expectations. You are just not going to be able to get everything done all the time. That is just not realistic. Don't be so hard on yourself. Perfectionists have a hard time with this. Um, sometimes they get paralyzed because they are just so used to being able to get everything done. But there are just seasons in life. Okay, Ecclesiastes tells us there are seasons in our life. And sometimes they're busy. And sometimes we don't get as much sleep. And sometimes we have a lot of extra stress. And we have all these things. So your best then is going to look different than your best when nothing is wrong. Okay, so be happy with your best. Lower your expectations. Be happy with your best. That doesn't mean don't do anything. It just means be happy with your best. Okay, keep hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. You know that forwards and backwards, right? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Okay, and, you, and we go over Romans 8, 28 all the time. We know that God works everything out for the good of his people. Like you said, make some lists. Um, write them down, cross them off as you go. Sometimes we, our anxiety goes up because it's a mechanism to keep us in, rem, uh, reminded that there's something we need to do. It's like a reminder. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. It's like that alarm you cannot stand on your phone. It's like it tells you over and over. But if you have it written down, you can release that because you can look at it. You don't have to have that reminder all the time going off in your brain. Like you said, stay in the present, the now. Okay, if you're not stressed, you can go ahead and jump all over. And when it comes to time, but when you are stressed, you need to focus on the now. And sometimes you need to fo just focus on the next five minutes. That's it. The next few minutes. Don't worry about the next eight hours. Don't worry about anything. Just in the next five minutes, this is what I'm doing. Break big chunks of time down to small chunks of time. This is when you want to get really good at thought stopping. You want to be able to block the thoughts that aren't helpful and push those out. Having schedule and order helps when we're in chaos. So create a schedule, do the same things every day. Some of those things can help. And like you said, there are some ADD types that deadlines are helpful. Yes, it's stressful, but it is helpful and we get things done. Oh, did I say we? I think I just included myself there, right? <laughs> we, for ADD types, right? Some of us need deadlines to help focus. And maybe you spend all this time, you don't know where to start, but because you have a deadline, boom, you just get it done. Like magic. It is just amazing, right? So maybe you need to have deadlines for yourself. Now, what about those folks, my dear, who just are like, you know what? There is no end in sight to this stress. What the heck do I do? You need to make yourself like a man-made or woman-made reprieve. Do something nice for yourself. It sounds um, so nice right there, just in that sentence. <laughs> it's calming. Do your own nails, garden, take a drive, binge on Netflix, which a lot of us have taken on while we're in the pandemic. The only way to get through like long-term stressors like the current pandemic, which we're almost, which I was like thinking about it the other day. And I was like, oh my God, we're almost going to be a year of this. You have to like practice self-care and it is super important. So if you're a caregiver for a loved one, you know, the county kind of gives you respite hours. You need to give yourself your own respite hours. You need mm -hmm. to find little moments of sanity within this insane place, whether it's just even something small, like trying to take a bath. Even if it is with little fingers underneath your door while you're trying to take a bath. But you know, you try to do what you can. A small, like, I mean, not even power nap of 30 minutes. I mean, even like five minutes just left. <laughs> just, 
<laughs> laying on your bed. Uh, whatever you can do, whatever is feasible with your schedule, try and do that because you need to find, like I said, these pockets of time or bubbles in time where you feel like your wusa time, your me time, your your I'm I'm recharging time. It's really important to know when you when you like the biophysical cues to your body when it's like breaking down like emotionally like um when it like it's trying to tell you hey slow down and sometimes you know not coronavirus sick but sometimes even illness is a way of telling your body to to slow it down to bring it down you know cat what do you think there's a scripture that i that i love part of a mental health organization that i have that promotes education christian education and mental health one of our base scriptures is this one i love it blessed is jeremiah 17 7 8 blessed is the man who trusts in the lord whose trust is the lord he is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought for it does not cease to bear fruit i love that because it reminds us that um, we, are, we have to be planted. We have to be rooted in the Lord. We need to be reviewing scripture. We need to be in a relationship with him. We need to be doing those things. We need to be connected to the vine in order for us to be so rooted next to the water that we don't fear when he comes, that we just, we just don't get anxious in your drought. We continue bearing fruit. I encourage you, you need to keep your eyes on the Lord. Isaiah 26, three tells us, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. That's not us getting to that peace in ourselves, that's us keeping our focus on him. When you are stressed, whether it's going to stay or not stay, our job is to keep our mind and our our trust focused on the Lord. And he adds peace to us. Okay. So that's one of my my first things to have. Having a stress-free life is not a prerequisite for joy when you have Jesus. There's joy because you have Jesus. So if you have chronic stress and it is just not going to go away, you are going to have to find some way to cope. There's just no sugary way to put it. You are just going to have to find some way and you may have to think outside of the box in order for you to just hang in there and to have joy. Of course, having Jesus in your life, you have joy. But in order to recognize those things, you are going to have to just, you're going to have to think outside of the box. For example, virtual learning is driving me a little bit crazy, but you know what? What I have to do with my kindergartner is put an earbud of um, listening to music at least one so that I can still hear him and I can hear his teacher, but also that I can get soothing at the same time so that I don't get too angry and things like that. You have to think outside of the box. If you need to connect the dots, uh, you need to do like a, a um, connect the dots page for like five minutes. I've seen some that are for adults that have up to 1400 dots to connect. If that 1400, literally like there's numbers, I can't believe it. If that soothes you, go for it. But you need to think outside the box and find something. And lastly, let's just make sure, okay? I know, don't, don't hit the stop button. Don't hit the fast forward. Listen and hear me out, please. Exercise. This is going to be so, so, so important. Exercise. It can be something that is so, so helpful and you don't need 72 hours to do it. You don't need 24 hours to do it. You don't need five. Five, 10, 20 minutes, whatever you can do will help treat depression. It will help prevent it. It could be so helpful. Take a walk, whatever you have to do, even if you have to do something with somebody there. Make sure you're doing those things. Now, how do you know when your stress is turning into depression? I think like when we're talking, when we're, as we're talking, I think that, um, you know, your stress is turning into depression when there is no reprieve, you know, that can turn into discouragement and discouragement obviously eventually leads to the depression. I do want to say that that question is not easy because everybody's biophysical cues, like I just said a little bit while before, are extremely different for me. Like I know, like because Kat knows me, like I will like unplug like from my phone. I do not want to talk to anybody. I kind of just want to like curl up in a ball. Like when I have like real major stressors, um, I find myself getting more forgetful. I'm a bad driver dur- oh <laughs> during my gosh. that time. Oh yeah, my gosh. I'm really sarcastic. Get this girl some antidepressants. <laughs> save the world (laughs) and I allow things to get cluttered and dirty which on a Mm. usual that's not a usual for me because I'm usually like a mad person picking up everything maybe I'm depressed Um, is that what you're saying (laughs) (laughs) and yes but you're right like for most women it's the opposite most women start cleaning like mad because they want to gain mastery or control over something so they'll just clean and clean clean because that's the only thing that they have in their world that they do have control over Mm. so in that like you know your stress is turning into depression when all of those things are happening, but you, you need to know your body. 
You need to know when it's too much for you when you're about to tap out. It's really important. And it is super important. I know that, you know, we harp on it a lot, but the self-care is super important because at the end of the day, therapists use this ATM metaphor about like, you know, if you make significant withdrawals, 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 Mm -hmm. like an ATM machine, and you make no deposits into yourself, you're left bankrupt. You have to take care of yourself in order for it not to get to that place where you're you're depressed. There is a certain amount, you know, people are always like, oh, depression. No, there's a certain amount of depression that's normal. It becomes abnormal when you start moving into clinical territory, like hopelessness and some of those other things. You don't want to get out of bed, hypersomnia. So do you mean like adjustment versus major depression? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like if there's a new stressor kind of going on or chronic, something's going on. Yes. A yes. typical response. And- Yes, versus like the average there. response, yeah. somebody, somebody passes away, obviously, it's normal to have a certain amount of depression when it turns into like unresolved grief or depression, mm-hmm. then you're, you're obviously in a problematic territory. So Kat, what would you say? Well, I think you covered it excellently. I think when you start to feel like you're in a zone, and I really think one of the major things is, you know, when you go through adjustment, you have this desire to want things to get better, you have a desire to want to do things. But when you're depressed, you just don't even have the desire anymore. So I think that's really important. That's a, a, a distinguishing factor. And of course, obviously, you know, if you're having suicidality or, or um, any of the other things, thoughts of harming somebody else, but like harming them, obviously those are signs of something a little bit more. But I think you could think of depression as your heart being kind of compressed and deflating. You're kind of in a funk, but not a pee funk, not, not a good funk, but like a bad funk that you just can't shake. Um, I think those are, are signs of depression. You feel immobilized, paralyzed, you start moving away from people. So Um, If we were talking about, okay, I hear you, what do I do? How do I manage the stress? How do I get better? Tell me spiritually, therapeutically, whatever you got, lay it on me, Susan. Okay, so first of all, I know everybody's like, uh, again, yes, pray. Pray, 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 pray. (laughs) It doesn't have to be, you know, a King James Version prayer of thee and thou because (laughs) um, it just has to be a sincere prayer of God, please help me. And sometimes it's God, please help me. Don't or help, help me not to hurt anybody. What about just help? <laughs> One word. Help, help if me you're not in real to bad shape, you need to say just the first letter. That's it. <laughs> in understand. the words of MC Hammer, <laughs> you gotta pray just to make it today. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh, is that the right song? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. Sorry. So they did a, a, a Harvard study. Um, it was per- Professor Tyler Van, Vanderweely found that young adults who pray t- daily tended to have fewer depressive symptoms and higher levels of life satisfaction, self-esteem, and positive effect in comparison to those who never prayed. Um, that was Psychology Today, December 3rd, 2019. I believe it. For those of you that are interested. Amen. So I would say that prayer falls into both the biblical and the cl- clinical because all of us even um, secularly encourage our clients to pray because it's a really good way of letting go. Absolutely. When you're praying, you're letting go of those control issues. And so it's super important. Psalms for one says, answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness, you have given me relief mm. when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. Psalm thirty nine twelve says, hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I am a sojourner with you, a guest like all my fathers. And our, it's not Psalms, just the book, when you are going through some crazy stress, aware that you can just feel so connected about, you know, what those writers are going through. The human experience. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Because that's what I will give David. Like, you, the Bible says he was mm-hmm. a man after God's own heart, and, and he was a very flawed man. But regardless of which, like all of us are, Except for our husbands. to find grace. No flaws there. <laughs> She's trying to hear frowning points. Men. <laughs> Did you hear that? Thera- <laughs> therapeutically, ask for what you need. I know a lot of people assume that, you know, you assume that they know what you need, but they don't know what you need. Sometimes you have to be very crystal clear with people. I always tell people to state the obvious because it's not obvious to everybody. <laughs> Um, that, you know, whatever you need, like babysitting or just time to go to the gym, take a nap for cat, it's run all of these things, whatever you need time for, ask for it. I run away from people run like literally like (laughs) that's my (laughs) 
And so in that, like, you know, you have to ask for help. Ask for the help that you need. Another one is have boundaries and don't overextend yourself. Like, you know, I always tell my clients about the plate metaphor. Um, If you put too much on your plate, it's just too much. You know, like everything starts being oozy and touching the peas and like everything else is messy. (laughs) Don't overextend yourself that your plate is like running over and full. Make sure you have boundaries and you learn to say no to things that are less important. Another one is take a drive. Do a mini road trip without a destination. Some of my clients have taken to driving and not getting out of their cars instead of, you know, using the gas station bathrooms. They've ordered travel porter potties. Do what you can within the comfort range of the current pandemic. Whatever your comfort range is, don't feel embarrassed by it. It's your comfort level and it's okay. Whatever you're comfortable with at that, this moment in time, then just give yourself some self-compassion. Kat, what do you think that we can do to help ourselves spiritually and also clinically? Well, I think you covered it for sure when it comes to you know, reading the Bible, praying, doing all things that we need to be doing to be connected. Those are such, we are so blessed by that. Thank the Lord that he has grace for us for that. I think you want to, uh, you need to keep on resetting, okay? I just put out a, oh no, I didn't just put out a video. I had one from April of resetting. People who are who successfully successfully navigate life well, who feel well, tend to be resetters. There are people who see life as a series of moments of new opportunities, new chances, new tries. Okay, so you need to keep just resetting every single day. Try again. Do not lose hope. Try to find purpose in this busy season that you have. When you find purpose in whatever it is that you're going through, it totally changes everything. It doesn't mean that you escape the stress of um, the work that it takes or whatever God has called you to, but it does help you feel better about it. When you find some, sometimes it gives you hope. Find purpose in what you're doing. If you need help figuring that out, ask somebody, see if they can kind of help you out with that. Um, We already discussed exercising. You know it is super, 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 super important. I think that you want to work on the thought stopping, reframing maybe, Reminding yourself that these are just busy seasons for right now. If you need wisdom, ask the Lord. Seek a therapist, seek a godly, uh, wise person to figure out what it is that you should be doing and maybe what you shouldn't be doing. Live in delight. What delights you? You need to have some sort of balance. You need to have something. You can't be walking through stress every single second. If your life is only about one thing, that may be an idol for you and you need to have other things in your life as well. So what other things do you have that has delight in it? Of course, within God's design and appropriateness. Is it music? Is it dancing? Is it uh, singing? Is it playing games? In God's design, there's sex. There is that, right? Outside of that, there are physical activities that you can do, play basketball, all those things. Maybe use your five senses. Sometimes we want to touch something soft. We want to um, smell something that smells really nice. We want to use your senses, envision something that is calming and relaxing. Use your senses, listen to something that relaxes you. Taste something, a tea or whatever it is. Pets are wonderful for many people. Get into some project activities, stay connected. Okay, so just whatever, think outside the box if you need to. If the only way for you to watch a movie is to, if it has cartoons in it because you're watching with the kids, then jump in to Disneyland world of movies, okay? Just do it. If your kids are stressing you out, and they probably are right now, try to be creative and find ways that you can have some alone time while they're still safe, okay? If you need, like you said, strap your kids in the car, go for a ride, whatever it is. Look up jokes, be cheesy, whatever it is, humor, those things kind of help. Uh, what do you want everybody to take away from this, Susan? I want everybody to take away that stress is normal, and as long as we are living, it's gonna be part of the human experience. I just need you guys to be careful that it doesn't stray mm. you from your, from your purpose, from God's purpose for your life. Because, you know, on the day to day, we have work, we have parenting, our roles as wives, sisters, all of these things. And we juggle a, a whole mm-hmm. bunch of different balls. Well, maybe all they're the stressed time. about not having that. And that's the yeah. thing they keep on stressing themselves about, right? Their expectations. All of those things they can derail your purpose. And so in that, I just want the takeaway to be like, keep on track with your purpose. You need to make just the same way that I say that you need to make pockets of sanity. You also need to make pockets of time to be alone with God as well. Um, so that you don't, that you aren't derailed by this, That's by right. living, basically. That's right. Kat, what do you want them to take away? Well, I'll just repeat, you know what, 
there is joy in Jesus and being stress-free is not a prerequisite. People that are joyful doesn't mean that they just have no stress, not at all. So your job is to focus on God, trust in him, and God will provide you with peace. Maybe if you mind taking this out in prayer. Lord, thank you for our listeners. Lord, thank you for giving us wisdom, Lord, to deal with stress management, God. Please, Lord, help us on our day-to-day existence, God, to be the best version that you have called us to be. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. God bless you guys. Be blessed. Hopefully less stress. Till next time. (laughs) All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.